Hello, Isabella from Pride Tire here and today we are back in the 1890s and also back to my wedding venue the beautiful St Audrey's um, in West Quantox Head um, As you can see the rooms are fantastic so I'm just sort of lounging wearing my tea gown and drinking some nice tea but soon we need to get dressed for the ball so today we are having a look at a ball gown in um, more or less 1897-98 um, cut in a princess style so it's not really different and unusual um, to what we've done before so at the moment you've seen that gown before it's a slightly earlier style of a tea gown but obviously not everybody could um, could afford to change the tea gowns every year or so so this one is 1891 and it's made in silk damask and plain silk with angel sleeves and this type of attire um, has, has been becoming much more popular in the end of the 19th century and tea gowns were worn at home for lounging and for um, basically receiving friends so that usually close friends there would be not a formal visit so you would be having your, your friends just for, you know, look at fashion books, for example, or have a, have a chat. So you are dressed in a comfortable attire, you can lounge, you can walk around. But it was not a gown you would be wearing outside of your home. It was a receiving gown at that time. Later on, that changes a little bit. But at the moment, they are just comfortable. Um, think about it as a posh version of a dressing gown, because that's basically what it is. You still wear a corset underneath, but the corset is quite loosely laced, so it doesn't really impede your lounging or comfort or eating cookies. Um, so I think the first thing I need to do is to get out of it and tighten my corset a little bit and change into my evening attire. Let's see. Okay. The tea gown is off, the corset is tightened, and I'm just wearing the usual undergarments of the era. Uh, with a slight difference from our usual bits, which is the combined chemise and petticoat at the same time. The princess petticoat where style was introduced in the doing the natural form era, but this basically um, reduces any bulk underneath the corset. Um, you do have other petticoats as well, and you do a drawers underneath. So I have the matching drawers and stockings and suspenders. And for some reason I'm missing a ribbon in one of the drawers. Never mind. This petticoat is an antique one actually, and it has been um, adapted slightly. It used to be a little bit longer, but there are marks showing that it was made shorter, most likely to work with possibly Edwardian, late Edwardian or teens garments and to be honest it would make a nice sort of summer wear nowadays <laughs> it's quite peculiar and it's not perfectly made not sure if you can see that the eyelets are not symmetrical we are missing one here so it has its own peculiarities and I'm absolutely loving my new corset from the fabric available from sokurvy.co.uk and it's a beautiful vintage brush and I love it, I'm, I'm loving it I dyed my laces to match it, that's how much I loved it I don't do these things now it is um, so that's the usual basis um, for the evening gown, especially for a princess one I um, might just wear a pant, or maybe not I'll go with that actually um, one interesting thing about the knickers, because we've already covered that in the have to go to the toilet. Um, hold on. These are the drawers, street drawers, and I think that's where the saying of getting your knickers in a twist comes from, because they are quite twisted at the moment. Hold on. Ah, maybe this way. Okay, we've we done it. It's brilliant. The, these are 
original pair of late Victorian drawers. As you can see, split, there's hardly anything holding them together. There's a couple of inches of seam and they are very sexy. I mean, just look at all that lace and insertion and obviously wide open in front, not so much when you close them. But that would look absolutely fantastic on the body. Um, it does look absolutely fantastic on the body. I tried it on, but I wouldn't be able to film it really because it's a little bit indecent, not this kind of YouTube video here. <laughs> but, I mean, these are about 120 years old and they look amazing. So they're in my little collection. Anyway, knickers aside. Let's continue with petticoats. And we have several layers today. Let me see what we do for our evening ones. We can go with an original petticoat. Again, nicely made cotton. Or I'll probably go, because I have this one, I don't really need so many. I'll just go with one petticoat, which is my usual go to 90s style. Which you have seen on other videos before. My hair is falling apart, but that's what happens when you don't have a maid. And at that point, you start seeing coloured petticoats, or rather coloured underskirts. And these are very often in silk and quite decorative. So I, funnily enough, found some silk in a matching colour for my corset. It's a simple A-line style, but because you need a little bit of oomph at the bottom of the skirt for the gown, you have a lot of fluffy frills and flounces at the bottom. Also at that time most underskirts and petticoats had a split waistband construction which meant the front of the waistband was fitted as you can see here whereas the back was basically a drawstring which made it not only easier to put on but also easier to adapt to different sizes. So most of the ones you see are in the same style. Funnily enough, not this one. This one has buttons. Oh no, this one is as well with strings and buttons. So let me just flip it to the front. So the front part of the waistband is shaped ever so slightly. And the rest is at the back. And it has a lot of blouses. I'm going to put my shoes on now, because otherwise I won't see much. <laughs> I could put a corset cover on, but considering that this it's a ball and I'll be dancing, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. This might actually be cut a little bit more. I won't put it on. So on to a gown. As I said, it's a princess style, which means there's no waist seam, there's no separate bodice and a skirt, which was the prevalent style at the time. It is just shaped with darts and panels all the way throughout the body. It's boned, the seams are finished by hand, and it has, again, typically of the types, a ruffle, all around on the inside. It closes at the back, so that's going to be quite challenging, but I can cry for help if I need to. Let me see if I can somehow get in. Come in. This needs to go out. And I think at that point, I'm just going to call for help. Help! Well, help was given by a handy husband, who is very handy with his eyelets and 
I think there are hooks here, there are hooks. So as you can see, the dress flows smoothly. It's a little bit too big for me to be honest at the moment, without any interruption. And the typical mid to late big sleeves and lots of decoration focus very much on the shoulders is here as well. The skirt has a slight train. Oh, so that's where the ribbon from the knickers went to. There you go. <laughs> so for dancing, you simply hold it in whichever, whichever hand you want. So it was a, a simple style, but a elegant one and slightly reminiscent of the aesthetic style of things that it dress. At least that's what it seems to me. So what I need now is a little bit more bling. Let me have a look. The tiara. I've got a big mirror there. Let's see if the tiara works. Some bits are sticky, but we'll have to stick. A little necklace. Let's see if I can put it on. In a second. Fail. Success. Earrings. And I think that's all the bling I need. I've got a fan, which is going to be very well used for the ball. And, oops, my long gloves. So, that's it, I think. Hope you've enjoyed it. I'll try to get some stills and some footage from the ball. If you enjoyed it, there is a buy me a coffee link in my description. And I hope I see you soon.